Hey, good morning, welcome back. Now, in the little series of videos we're making here on valve clearances on the XJR, we're covering the critical steps one video at a time. In the first video, I showed you how to measure those valve clearances, how to determine what they are and record all those clearances on a piece of paper. And we discovered that every one of them, all 16, are too tight. And having recorded the information on a chart, so I now know what all my clearances are, in the second video, I showed you how to use this little tool to hold the two shim buckets down so you can get the shims out and read the number on them and find out what size they are. So in this video, a common question so far on the other two has been, how do you determine what shim size you need to replace the incorrect shim with? We'll cover that today. So first of all, let's show you how a technician would do it at the dealership if you're using a paid service. Firstly, once he's got all your top end stripped off and exposed the situation and rotated the cams to the right orientation to check the gap, he takes a feeler gauge, he checks the gap and determines that it's too small. So if the clearance is too small, as in this case, that means the shim is too big. And to make the clearance bigger, we need to make the shim smaller. Quite straightforward. So he applies the little tool, holds down the buckets, pulls out the shim, reads the number, just exactly like we did. And it's at that point that the technician's life is a lot easier than ours. He comes over to his bench where he's got a large supply of shims, a big box with maybe 250 shims in it, all different sizes. He looks at the shim that he's got, determines from his experience exactly what shim he needs to rectify the clearance, selects it from his stock, takes that one over to the engine and pops it in. Easy as that. So as you can see, your technician's life at the dealership is very easy. He has that big old supply of shims in stock and he knows from experience how to calculate what one he needs to rectify the clearance. And he can do it one at a time till all 16 are correct and then button the job up. But you and I, us mere mortals, we don't have that luxury. Our life is a lot harder. Here's what we have to do. Take a shim out, record the number on a chart, exactly what it is, then put it back in, because we don't have that stock of shims to replace with the correct one. We've got to put the old one back in, then go to the next lobe and do that one and that one and that one until we've done all 16. Then we have some mathematics to do. Now to do that mathematics accurately, you need to record the data accurately. So I would always suggest, rather than just taking the size number off the shim, you actually measure them as well. And that means treating yourself to some measuring equipment that you might not have. It's time to buy a micrometer. Now this is a micrometer, if you've never seen one. It's a little instrument for measuring extremely accurate tolerances. Now, in the days of old, they just had the manual method of reading them from a drum on the side, and it still has it here, but the modern ones, they have a digital readout to make life really easy. So there's now no excuse for not being able to read a micrometer. Right, this shim is a spare one from a toolbox. It's never been used, it's a 275. Now, this has been another question. What does the number pertain to? A 275 is just simply missing a decimal point. It's 2.75 millimeters. That's what the numbers actually mean. And to measure it in a mic, all we do is start by do the mic up, make sure it's zeroed, and then open up the gap and pop it in the gap there and then close the micrometer by using this little ratchet wheel on the end, not the big one. And where that clicks, there it is. Now that's a 275 and as you can see it measures 2755 so it's a fresh unused 2.75 mil shim. Now the reason you're going to need a micrometer for this job is twofold. Firstly I found three exhaust shims on that engine that had no numbers on at all. They've either been rubbed off or they were never there in the first place. Maybe they were factory shims, maybe they weren't marked when it came to the factory, I don't know. But I had no way by looking at them of determining what thickness they were. So there's no way of determining what new thickness I need. So you need a micrometer if they're not marked. The other thing is when you get your new shims, don't trust the numbers. You do need to check them to make sure what you're putting in is what it says on the shim. So 
That's why it's worth the investment. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You don't necessarily need a digital one. This is quite expensive. I wanted to treat myself to this because I do this kind of thing quite often, but you can get them a fraction of the price of this one from as little as 30 or 40 pounds, and you just read the numbers off the drum, which are the old fashioned way of doing it. If you don't know how to do that, really and honestly, there's videos for it. You can find out how to read a micrometer any day. It's very easy. So link in the description, treat yourself. You're gonna need one. So we've recorded the gap. We've recorded the shim size that sits under the gap. Now we need to determine what new shim we need to adjust that clearance so it's correct. So your technician at your dealership, this is how he does it. It's a 0.15, clearance measures 0.05. It needs to add 0.1 to the clearance, therefore reduce the shim by 0.1. Shim comes out, oh, it's a 275. I need a 265. He goes to the box, picks up a 265, checks it with the mic, pops it in, job done, moves on to the next one. That's why a technician can do this job in the dealership in an hour and you pay an hour's labor job done. However, you and I, as I've said many times already, can't do that. This is blow by blow on an easy to follow colored chart, exactly how you work out what size shims you need. So to make a chart like this, you need to start with a datum point. You need the specification from the manual that you're trying to work everything towards. So you go to your manual, you take the inlet, and exhaust valve clearance tolerances and you write them on the chart to start with. That is the clearance that you've got. And on this bike, it is from 0.16 to 0.20 on exhaust and from 0.11 to 0.15 on inlet. You record that on the chart first because we we'll refer everything we're looking at to those tolerances. Next, we'll take number three exhaust, left-hand shim. We'll use that as the first example. 0.10 is the current clearance. It needs to be a maximum of 0.2 and a minimum of 0.16. So at 0.1, it is 0.06 under clearance. We need to expand that, preferably up to 0.2 to give us a nice thick clearance within spec. So to aim at 0.2, we need to add 0.1. The current shim written in green, I measured that, that is 2.85. That's 2.85 millimeters, it's marked as a 285, and I need to reduce that in thickness by 0.1 to increase the clearance up to 0.2. So to reduce a 285, you make it a 275, easy. And the, the blue number is a 275 shim, that's what I intend to put in there. So we'll park a 275 in there, and that should be correct. Next, we'll take number three exhaust, and we'll take the right hand shim, and that's where it gets slightly more complicated here. It's the same tolerance when we read it, it's 0.10, but the shim that I found in there measures on the micrometer as 2.84, and it is written 284 on it. So to reduce that shim by 0.1, so we end up with a 0.2 clearance, I need to take the 284 to a 274, and there's no 274. Obviously they exist, but they're probably genuine ones and a lot more money. I'm buying pattern shims, perfectly okay, and they come available to me in 0.05 increments. So I can buy a 270, a 275, a 280, and so on. I can't buy a 274, so here's what you do. So if I park a 275 in here, I'm not increasing this tolerance by 0.1, I'm increasing it by 0.09, obviously, which will make my tolerance when I'm finished 0.19, perfectly within tolerance, no problem at all. So a 275 is perfectly okay to put in there. But here's the thing, take a look down at the shim that is residing in the inlet hole. It's a 274, I found one. There's a 274 right there. I can use that in here if I wish. So all I do, I buy a new one, what will be a 270, I put a 270 in there, liberate this 274, then I can come over to this one and I can put it in that slot, saving myself buying a new shim. So armed with all this data, I took all of these shim sizes I'd calculated and I made a list. I then went onto Yambit's website and I worked out that yes, they've got them all available on their website. They're not always all in stock, but they are available at some point. So I ordered the whole lot, all 16. And I did this in confidence because they offer what I think is a rather special service. Their shims come heat sealed into a little tiny plastic bag with a part number on. And if you find that you can salvage one of your other shims and use it elsewhere, and you don't need that particular one, 
they'll take it back and give you a refund, which I think is commendable for them and very special. That's the kind of service we used to have in the old days. So order with confidence. I ordered all 16. If there's four or so I don't need, I can send them back and get the money back. And from them, they're about £3.99 each, I think. So all 16 are about 65 quid. I might get some of that money back. I'll certainly get a little bit back, that's for sure. Anyway, one more thing, one more point to make. Now, we have a very important caveat for you at this point. This job, valve clearance check and rectification, is without doubt the most critical, technically complex and difficult job possible within your servicing regime. And it comes with the most dire consequences if you get it wrong and make a mistake. So if you're gonna do a job like this, you're gonna need some mechanical knowledge, some ability to handle tools and get around problems. Trying to do a job like this as a total novice, just following YouTube videos, is a mistake. I would step away from it, invest the money with a mechanic and play it safe. And finally, as a disclaimer, if you're gonna do a job like this based entirely on YouTube videos alone, then you do so entirely at your own risk. We can take no responsibility for any mistakes you might make. So thank you for watching. The new shims should be here tomorrow. So we'll show you how to fit them, how to check the new correct clearances and button it all up. I'll see you then.